to have Agatha Ruiz de la Prada, who will speak in conversation with our two curators, Ariel Elia and Elizabeth Way, who co-curated the exhibition Global Fashion Capitals. Agatha Ruiz de la Prada presented her first collection in Madrid in 1981, and since then her designs had been shown all around the world. Agatha has been a guest of honor and a representative of, of Spanish fashion on catwalks in over 30 countries. For Ms. de la Prada, fashion is a medium of artistic expression. Her work has been displayed in museums in Spain, France, Italy, and many other countries. She is one of the designers featured in the Museum at FIT's show Global Fashion Capitals, and next week a new exhibition devoted to her poster's design will open at Instituto Cervantes here in New York City. Since 1986, her, her company has produced more than 100 fashion accessory licenses. Her fashion and license, licensed products are sold in her flagship stores in Madrid, Barcelona, Paris, Milan, New York, Oporto, her online store, as well as a number of multi-brand stores present in over more than 150 countries. In 2011, the Agatha Ruiz de la Prada Foundation was created to preserve her legacy. We want to thank um, Agatha Ruiz de la Prada for being here tonight, and Lucia Cordero for facilitating the organization of this event. Both are close friends of the Museum at FIT. So thank you everybody for coming out and a special thank you to Agatha for coming all the way from Madrid. So when thinking about the exhibition Global Fashion Capitals, uh, we were already familiar with Agatha's work as we have some in the collection at the museum and we were so pleased that she had donated this piece. We were really captivated by the wonderful colors she uses and when we received this piece we were just in awe of the very, very large exaggerated bow and really kind of iconic of your work. So uh, Global Fashion Capitals will be open until 8 p.m. if you'd like to come see this piece there. And if you're not familiar with the exhibit, it explores the history of both established and then 16 new emerging fashion capitals and fashion cities. So in the exhibition, we include Madrid as an emerging capital, but it's been important for fashion and influential in fashion for a long time, since the 17th century. So Agata, can you tell us a little bit more about that history? Well, in Spain, we always have a kind of complex of inferiority, but for centuries, Spain has been, some centuries, it has been the most important country in the world. No? So they were the most powerful country. No? But uh, they, at the same time, there was a, they were very, very powerful. They began to be had a lot of economic and a lot of problems because it was so huge. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult to control that empire. No? And the Spanish monarchy has been, at that moment, very influential in fashion. It's, Spain has, the, has discovered, which is completely against my style, <laughs> but the black. Mm -hmm. The black was very expensive at that time. And in Spain, because there was a big link between fashion and religion, people were very, very austere, mm -hmm. and they were showing anything. And, and, the, and there was, for, for centuries, the Spanish fashion was very elegant, but, but very austere. And well, we have, uh, Spain says, and, and I agree completely, that we have one the best uh, painters in history. We have Velázquez, Goya, Zurbarán, have a lot of, in that time, and we have a lot of, so was the most important uh, painter for me in history, which is uh, Picasso, who was Spanish. It, the, the, I, I am very grateful to the FIT to be in the exhibition. I have only one, one thing to tell to you, because you enter to the exhibition and you see Paris. And in Paris, you see Balenciaga. And Balenciaga <laughs> is from Spain. 
We do mention it in the label. (laughs) When I I go very often, I I, I spend half of my time in Paris, and sometimes in in, in Paris they say the French painter Picasso. (laughs) And you cannot say the the, the Picasso is a French painter, no? So I agree that uh, Paris was a very important city in the life of Valenciaga, but... um, but it's the Spanish uh, artist from that it is the best of the of the I think it's the best of the high level couturiers, the best in the history, and he is completely Spanish. <laughs> So speaking about uh, international Spanish fashion designers, one of the most famous ones, as you mentioned, is Cristobal Balenciaga, but there's many others that have come out of Spain. So There is another who is also a, a big, big artist who was, Maria, uh, who was Fortuny. Yes. And he also, if you go to Venice, they will say he's a Venetian couturier, uh, <laughs> but he was from Spain. And he discovered a style, and he was there. There is not a big difference between him and a, an artist. He, he also was doing a lot of um, patterns, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and also painting and everything. And he was the, the best of the best. And you can see some of the screen prints and the paintings that he was and doing. He, in the he discovered that which is a long time before Issey Miyake, which is a, 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 one of my favorite designers, but he was the one who put that in, the, in fashion. That special pleating yes. technique. No, the this, this technique of the... Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And what's so special about him, too, is that he was pleating with silk as opposed to Miyake was doing it with more polyesters, and with silk that it will become unpleated very quickly if it's exposed to any humidity. So. What a revolutionary. And he was exposed to all the humidity because he used to live in, in Venice. Wow. He, he ha, now he has a museum in Venice. He has had it for a long time. And now the museum has been under a big renovation with one of the best uh, interior designers in the world. But I think before, I like it, before it was his house. Mm-hmm. And you can see his house, how he lived, and mm-hmm. his and his works. And I prefer the, the one before than this one. But <laughs> you cannot say that because it's a very, very polemical thing. So when you look at this, what uh, is, does anything remind you of Spain or his I designs? remember in the 70s, 75, 76, uh, well, no, he died in the 73, I think. Mm-hmm. And in the 75, uh, in the time of the Dead of General Franco, they organized a big exhibition of Cristóbal Valenciaga in the uh, public library in Madrid. Mm-hmm. It was the first time in the public library they had organized. It was perhaps the first fashion exhibition ever, no? Mm-hmm. And it was so incredible, no? Yeah. And when you see from near address of Valenciaga, it's the emotion that the biggest emotion you can. You can feel because he's so he has a sense of proportion that nobody else has. And many of his designs were inspired too by Spain. That they were inspired by many things, but especially Spain. Yes, but in that time, uh, Spain Spain was after the war, and Spain was a very poor country. We mm-hmm. have forgot our <laughs> empire, and and so he, and the people didn't have the money to buy his dresses, so he mm. went to Paris and he had the, a big prayer of him in Paris. And we also have Paco Rabanne as well. Paco Rabanne is um, one of my favorites. Yeah. I love him and he's very kind. And one time they asked him which was his uh, Spanish favorite designer and he said it was me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it's very easy to understand because we have lots of things in common. No? Mm-hmm. I think he was a visionary and in the 60s um, he did the, with, he, with Pierre Cardin did yes. the, the, and, and, and Courrèges, yes. the three of them were the genius of the 60s, no? Mm-hmm. And uh, him working with metal, yes, it's something that it's incredible. I remember once I was in Madrid, and there was a, a, a woman of a cavalry 
whose name was Norma Duval. Nothing to do with what I like with my style, but he, she was wearing a raban. And it was so incredible, that dress, that I never forgot that, that night in all my life, because it was one of the most beautiful dresses I've seen in my life. Mm -hmm. So I admire him a lot. And then we have Manolo Blahnik as well. Which is also a... Thanks for the little friend of Jose, a friend of, my, of mine. And this, and two months ago, I made my first exhibition of shoes in a, the museum, the shoe, a shoe museum mm -hmm. in the south of Spain. And he wrote a little introduction for me. Mm -hmm. So I was very proud of that. And we can see too that in these shoes that he even highlights the shoe on the right. But also there are people saying, and Manolo Blacknick is from London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the shoe on the right uh, was a shoe that he took from Spanish and The culture. problem of the Spanish designers is that, that we are not proud enough to say we are from Spain. And that's a problem, no? Except because for you. Very, yeah. very proud <laughs> to be from Spain. <laughs> So um, as we're going to see, fashion goes to a big change um, after the dictatorship ends. But before we get into that, I want to talk about, um, ask you about couture under the dictatorship in the 50s and the 60s. Yes, Can you tell the, us a In the more? 50s, Spain, uh, 40s and 50s, Spain was one of the three most important countries for couture. It was Paris, always Paris. <laughs> it was, in that time, more Rome than Milan, mm -hmm. then Milan... Uh, went a hundred times more, became more, much more important than Rome. And there was Spain. And they came sometimes to, for example, to New York, mm -hmm. and they were treated like, like princes, no? <laughs> and they, it was, uh, there, is a, there are a lot of anecdotes of how they came here with the best hotels, with the, the Iberia, <laughs> which was and the Spanish airline, mm -hmm. but they came with all the mannequins and all the models and all the, they spent here one month in the best hotels, <laughs> was other times, no? And they used to sell to, the, to all the big department stores mm -hmm. and had a lot of success here. So tell us a little bit about Balenciaga's line, the ISA line that he had created. That Isa was a society of Balenciaga. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he put his personal name, and sometimes he put the name Isa, because it was I don't know why. Which one is the reason mm -hmm. why he used sometimes a more? Because perhaps he wanted to do more pret a or he was it was less expensive, or he had some legal problems. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps in Spain it was Isa, and in, in, in Paris it was Cristóbal Valenciano. And then here we see Susie Parker, um, photographed in Vogue. Can you tell us a little bit more about this couturier? Yes. Yes. Bueno, Manuel Pertegaz, who died last year, oh. was one of the... O sea, apart from Valenciaga, there was uh, Pertegaz, and there was a generation of four or five who were very, very successful. He was from, from Barcelona, he was very little, very intelligent, and he worked like a crazy. He didn't that have the international success of Balenciaga because he always spent his life in, Bar in Barcelona. But he was very good and he had a life of a lot of successes. He, perhaps he didn't become as Christian Dior tal because he was he and his team. Mm -hmm. He didn't have someone as Louis Vuitton or, or Arnaud in his back. No? Mm -hmm. So we do see then fashion both in Madrid and in Barcelona as well. Yes, at the beginning, Barcelona for, for, for centuries has been very important for textiles. Mm -hmm. And there were the richest people in Barcelona have the money from the textile industry. Mm -hmm. So it was very... The, the easy thing to think was that Barcelona was the city of fashion. And for a long time, that was the truth. But Madrid, with the political center in Spain, mm -hmm. had, in the last 30 years, I can tell you, has made a, a very important political effort to make Madrid a capital uh, city, a, 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 capital, a city of, of fashion, no? mm -hmm. 
So at the beginning, there was a big war between Madrid and Barcelona. <laughs> but at the end, there was much more money and much more political will in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And Madrid became much more important than Barcelona. In Madrid, they had, there is a fashion week, a fashion week, which, which name was Cibeles. Mm -hmm. And in Barcelona, the name was Gaudí. But at the, Gaudí had disappeared, and, and um, Cibeles is still quite powerful. Mm -hmm. So we can see here some um, continuing um, on the chronology. This Spanish is my best actors. friend in Spain of the designers. Yeah? I love him. <laughs> He's the best. He was born in, in Córdoba, mm -hmm. and he was six, when he was six years old, in, during the war, the Spanish Civil War, mm -hmm. his father was killed. He, his father was a Republican. Eh? So he was very poor and that, and he has a lot of problems. He went to Madrid, and then he became the most successful Spanish designer. He was so, so elegant and so extraordinary. He used to have two guepards, guepards in his house. Wow. So he was completely crazy, <laughs> and, and, and he has a very big garden in his terrace. Mm -hmm. And he used to dress the Queen of Spain. Mm -hmm. He used to do the uniforms for, for Iberia. He did everything, no? The problem, as with, uh, as with uh, Pertegas, is that he didn't have someone... Financial backer. Yes. Mm -hmm. But Pertegaz, who is from Barcelona, you know the people from Barcelona know more about money than the people from Madrid and the rest of Spain. So Pertegaz, little by little, he, he survived. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that Elio Verhaeger, no. But he's a gentleman, he's so lovely, he's so elegant, and he can tell you stories for... He was in the point to write his biography. Mm -hmm. and, and I love him. He always, he's part of my foundation. Well, he's one of the founders of my foundation. And we see, too, that Vogue during this time is really picking up on a lot of the Spanish fashion. Spent, yes. Spanish fashion at that time was very important because we had very good hands in Spain. Mm -hmm. and there were very good um, ateliers. And, but a lot of these ateliers disappear with one of the different crises. No? So we can see here, too, really picking up on the same idea of kind of the space age moving into the 60s. Yes, yeah. but this, is a, a, this dress is very funny, but the people from Madrid was more, more conventional mm -hmm. to wear that. that. That was wearing in Barcelona, not in Madrid. Mm. In Madrid, they don't... Fashion is more conservative? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Barcelona used to be, but now it has changed a lot, but Barcelona used to be much more modern. I am half and half. My father <laughs> is from Madrid and my mother from Barcelona. I was born in Madrid, but all of the rest of my family were born in Barcelona. So I am half and half. So you can speak on both yes. cities. <laughs> I know both cities very well. I've been living all my life between both cities. So La Movida was a very, very wonderful turning point. So when I was 15, yes. my father and mother separated. Mm -hmm. Not divorced, but separated. So my mother went back to Barcelona, and my father stays in Madrid. So I had two brothers and two sisters. The brothers were with my father in Madrid, mm -hmm. and, the, and the sisters with my mother in Barcelona. So because I was the one tal, I spent <laughs> one year in Barcelona, one year in Madrid, one year in Paris. So I spent some years well, in Barcelona, and then I came to Madrid. Mm -hmm. And I, I, would have, I, my, I would have enough to be an architect, because my father is an architect, and, and he comes from a big family of architects. Mm -hmm. But I, I decided I wanted to be a designer. No? So I came to Madrid, and I came in the best moment of the history of Madrid. <laughs> I came to Madrid, I was 19 years old, and there was no important schools like this one mm -hmm. in Madrid. So there was no, no, I was, I had spent the, the, the year before in a school in Barcelona, who mm -hmm. was Artes y Técnicas de la Moda, but I didn't like it. So I went to Madrid and I wanted to work. And I asked uh, for free work to Jesús del Pozo, that mm -hmm. we speak about, from Jesús del Pozo, who is in the exhibition also, no? And he said, no. <laughs> so there was a, a, the most crazy designer in the world, whose name was Pepe Rubio. 
<laughs> who say, yes, you can come with me. So mm -hmm. the, the team was Pepe Rubio and me. <laughs> and he was, uh, he has been working for years and years in El Corte Inglés, which is the big department store in mm -hmm. Spain. And he was someone tall, very, very tall. He wa went to work with um, boots, uh, plastic boots, mm -hmm. from here to here, <laughs> and, and shorts. <laughs> and, no sé, ¿cómo se llaman las sombreras? Big shoulder, shoulders, mm -hmm. shoulders, like that, no? Because uh -huh. all his work was mm -hmm. about shoulders. <laughs> o sea, the, my only work was to go to a shop to buy shoulder <laughs> So sometimes we put 12, sometimes we put 20, sometimes we put 5, you know? but normally all the work was the installation of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And he was so tall that, and he was completely crazy. And, and my dream was to, be, to, to, uh, to learn how to do patterns, mm -hmm. because he was very, very good in patterns. But he used to do that in the middle of the night with his friends, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock. So when I arrived every morning at 10 or 11, he was sleeping. <laughs> and we had a very big shop, and the shop was completely empty. <laughs> and we only had a client. One, that client was Beatrice de Bourbon, and the once a uh, cousin of the king. Mm. And she has three little girls, and she came always with three pinks, I promise you. Okay. Right? It was the only... The only client we have. She was a fan of Pepe Rubio, and she was wearing the, the, all the colors <laughs> every day. No? So I spent with him five or six months, and it was so good. So one of his ex-partners mm -hmm. came to me and said, Agatha, Pepe is completely crazy. <laughs> Why we don't do, you and me, a collection? And I said, well, no, but yes. So I did my first fashion collection with 20 years old, Wow. And in that time, I discovered a place which was the most beautiful place in the world, who was called Local. It was a center of design. Mm -hmm. It was very crazy. All the people of La... And it was one of the four or five places of La Movida. Wow. So imagine you come to Madrid and you are right, and it's the best time ever. Like <laughs> if you come in the 70s to New York mm -hmm. and you go and the, and the next day you, you become friend of Andy Warhol or something like that, no? and you go to the factory and you know the Studio 54, the 54 and everything. No? So um, I began to work there and I, I was, my first fashion show was something incredible for me and it was a period of a very, very, very important from a point of view of culture. Mm -hmm. This girl was one of my, the girls who go to, to my studio to do uh, intern or interns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was an intern who came to Madrid a long time ago. She wanted to, to write, because she's very theoretical, about La Movida. Mm -hmm. she did, she was so what is ma La much, Movida? Much younger, no? Mm -hmm. La Movida is a, a movement that happened in Madrid mm -hmm. after the death of General Franco, the, the coming of the democracy. Mm -hmm. democracy and, and, and it was, Barcelona has been the modern city for all the people, the, the Lagos Divine, mm -hmm. uh, the, well, it was Lagos the Lagos Divine, and it was very funny. Mm -hmm. And um, Boccaccio, a well, lot of places in Barcelona. And then in Madrid, it was like gray with all the. <laughs> but at that point in Madrid, we had a, a fantastic mayor mm -hmm. who was old. He, he was a professor, mm -hmm. Professor Tierno Galvan. And he decided Madrid was going to be completely crazy, you no? Know? And so there, there were. And, a lot of people, like the most famous of all of them is Pedro Almodóvar, mm -hmm. and they come to, to do films and to do parties and to do so music. So a huge movement with yes. cinema, with fashion, with, with a art. lot of music, rock music, mm -hmm. with, with painters, with everything. No? So in Madrid was a party for some years. No? Mm -hmm. After that, it, we had the 92. In 92 in Spain, we had the Olympic Games mm -hmm. and we had the Expo in Sevilla. No? Mm -hmm. So all the international press in the world were, had to, to, at that time, when the press had a lot of money and a lot of, <laughs> and, uh, and they had to speak about Madrid. Mm -hmm. So they came to Madrid and all the days, uh, we had an interview with uh, <laughs> with New York Times, with uh, PBS, with uh, Newsweek, with all of them. 
National Geographic, all the um, international federal TV, all the, every week we had one of these big newspapers uh, writing a story about what was happening in Madrid. And what happened in Madrid was La Movida. So that girl mm -hmm. what, um, began to write about La Movida. She began to, to have a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And she became a professor in a uh, university in the south of France, mm. Montpellier. Mm. Uh, so, so in French, she wrote a, a 300 pages book about oh. La Movida. And during these 30 years, this, this, all these years, 20 years, she was writing me once a month, something like that. And then I write the, the introduction for her. Mm -hmm. And when I read the, the book, it was wonderful because I learned <laughs> so many things. And I was there, and she wasn't there, no? <laughs> so it, it's a wonderful book. I think it's the most, the best book written about La Movida because there is a lot of books with images of La Movida. Mm -hmm. Because the, one of the things we were doing all the time is photos, like mm -hmm. today. But mm -hmm. today everybody does photos, but at that time only the people of La Movida were all the day taking <laughs> photos. So she, oh, this is the, the this is another place. This is gallery. This, this is a video. Mm -hmm. So we have an early video from 1985 that features you, so very early in the... A leading Movida. figure in La Movida is Agatha Ruiz de la Prada. A young fashion designer from Barcelona who has enjoyed tremendous success in the open-minded atmosphere of post-Franco Madrid. With rock star Alaska, among others, she was among the original group of artists who created La Movida as a counterculture movement. La Movida is very difficult to explain, for example. La Movida is difficult to explain, but there are dazzling people in La Movida. Actually, they are people who are fighting against everything. Contra todo. There are really beautiful people in La Movida. La Movida is almost a generational movement. That is, a 50-year-old person cannot belong to La Movida. It is something that goes from about 24 to 34, 35. Desde pequeña quería... Ever since I was a young girl, I wanted to design dresses. My family has always been closely related to the world of art in Spain, with Goya, with Gaudí, with Cert. When I was a child, I wanted to do everything, everything, everything. But I thought the most practical thing would be to design, because it is the easiest, fastest way to make a person happy. So very early with you and the... Yes, that is 33 years ago, uh, years ago, no? So it was a very funny time. The, it, a lot of pe the people like I have seen in the video are, are dead now mm -hmm. because after the post Movida was horrible. Mm -hmm. Because in the Movida there were a lot of drugs, not me, but a lot of drugs. <laughs> and, and so <laughs> there, there, a lot of people disappeared. In the, mm -hmm. You cannot mm -hmm. imagine it was like. And after the movie, it was the time of AIDS and the time of, you know, after the... But after how incredible the... that you were there and around that very mm -hmm. early and, on. and one of the best things that happened is when Andy Warhol, mm -hmm. Andy, the, 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 the gallery which was before, mm -hmm. it was for me, the day I, I went to that gallery, it was one of the best sensations I have had in my life because it was in a garage, mm -hmm. in a normal garage of the most communal folk. Mm -hmm. Cartier, um, um, neighborhood in Madrid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then in this garage there was um, Fernando Vijande, who mm -hmm. was the the best connected man with New York in that time. Mm -hmm. He had that gallery. You know? So I say the dream of my life is to expose the. So I was very 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 <laughs> adamant, and pushing, so yeah. pushing, and I arrived to do an exhibition there. I was mm -hmm. 22 eh? or 23. <laughs> and I was so, so bad pushing that he didn't have another <laughs> option than to let me do the exhibition. And after three months after my exhibition, mm -hmm. Andy Warhol came to the same gallery. Oh my gosh. So, so tell us he, about when he came. In and, and, and he came with a lot of people mm -hmm. who was a magician because he was very, very good in public relations. Mm -hmm. Um, so he organized for him a week with, the, there was 
all kinds of parties and all kind of, and it was part of that team. It was wonderful. This is me. Mm -hmm. Well, this is an homage to Andy Warhol, the one, the mm -hmm. dressing. And then we see and the other, were... the other lady who is in that picture, whose name is Pitita Rirojo, she was another character. <laughs> Impressive. Perhaps she was the oldest in La Movida, mm -hmm. but she was so strange that she was part, she was, she was part of La Movida. Mm -hmm. And we see that some of your work too has been inspired by pop culture. Yes, Andy Warhol. I have made a lot of homage to Andy Warhol and this is an, an old portrait. So some of your other contemporaries, Sabia, from uh, also from Spain. Yes, and also from, from La Movida. She she was in my first fashion sh fashion show, mm -hmm. and she began like three or four years after. Mm -hmm. But in that time, Sibila was very important in La Movida. Mm -hmm. But before Sibila, mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, the 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 uh, Jesus del Pozo. Yes, who we also, so we have both of these pieces sí. that are in the exhibition, the Sevilla, and then also, uh, this is more contemporary Del Pozo, but yes. Jesus Del Pozo also. Je in Jesus Del Pozo was born in a very classical street of Madrid, mm -hmm. and her family used to own, um, they used to do cestas, como se dice cestas? Baskets, they do mm -hmm. baskets in a like, typical, typical from Madrid. And mm -hmm. he was very intelligent, and he has a, uh, had a lot of talent, and he is the designer from Madrid forever. It's why I asked him for work, and he said no. <laughs> so, um, uh, it, it, when I began to work in the time of La Morida, Jesús del Pozo was the owner of the fashion in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sibila was very successful also. Mm -hmm. But uh, at what moment Sibila decided to hide herself? She, she mm -hmm. always liked very much the idea of hiding herself. She has different spurts where she'll be in fashion and then for eight years she won't be. And recently now she's just after being away from eight years, now just reviving No, her more than eight years, perhaps 15 yeah. years or more. Mm -hmm. And then with Del Pozo, now with Joseph Fon, another Spanish And Del Pozo died. Two years ago, mm -hmm. three years, or so before Del Pozo, who was much, 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 uh, much younger than mm -hmm. Pertegaz, because Pertegaz was 92. Mm -hmm. I remember for the first time we gave a prize, a Spanish prize of fashion, mm -hmm. they named me for the jury. So I say, I was in the jury and, and, and I could influence a lot in that jury. So I say we must give that to Pertegaz because Pertegaz is so old, he is going to die in the, in the, <laughs> and I convince everybody, even if it was not my absolutely favorite because I prefer Berhayer, mm -hmm. but I say this year Port uh, Pertegaz and next year Berhayer because, uh, so we gave him. So and uh, we were in a room and we have to call to his house, no? And they, and they call to his house. The Minister of Culture want to, to speak with Mr. Pertegaz. I said, no, no, he's sleeping the nap. No, 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 he cannot, no. It's very important because it's very urgent because we can not go off that room mm -hmm. because nobody can tell who has win, no? And for one hour and a half or two hours, <laughs> he didn't take the telephone. And it was the Minister of Culture. No, 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 he's sleeping and what do you want and don't bother when call next week, something like that. And this is also a photo of the time of La Movida. This is me. And this was the first time I went in the New York Times. One of the first time, perhaps. So no, no, I didn't. And, and I had 22 or 23 years old. I was very, wow. very happy with that. So this is one of your hoop dresses, and um, you have a My lot hoop of dress was the, mo the most important dress I did. <laughs> In the time of La Movida, mm -hmm. one of the characteristics of La Movida is that people were not thinking, I, uh, never thinking about money. Money mm -hmm. was something nobody was thinking of. But people were crazy to become famous. Mm -hmm. So uh, that kind of things impress us a lot. So we see um, this is one of your iconic pieces. And as we go through um, the slides, I want to talk a little bit more about your career and your inspirations. So here we have. Um, yes, I think the hula hoop has a lot of influence of Las Meninas. Mm -hmm. I have been doing Meninas is the most characteristic. There are two 
beautiful dresses in Spain, which are Las Meninas, mm -hmm. and for me, the dresses of Sevillana. So, so Sevillana is fantastic. So we so, saw the Meninas paintings, and then these are um, a few of your dresses from your collection. The, this one is from the FIT collection. Yes, we hold this collection. And this once collection. I did, well, not very long time ago, I did an exhibition, in uh, no, a fashion show in Milan, who was only of Menina dresses. But mm -hmm. I've been doing Menina dresses all my life. And, and in Spain, we have these Menina dresses who are wonderful. The best painter of the Menina dresses is, is uh, is um, Velázquez, but also there are pop painters like Kipo Crónica, who in the 60s used to do the best meninas, unas meninas mm -hmm. impre, wonderful meninas. And also one dress that I love is the dress of Sevillana. Because my, my, girl, my daughter, when she was four years old, once she went with a friend of mine mm -hmm. to the south of Spain. I was going out for a one week and I said, if you want, I can take her of Cosima. So she went, and, and when she came back, she said, when I am old, or so when I am grow up, I want to be Sevillana. <laughs> because when you go to Sevilla, which is one of the things everybody has to do once in his life, you go to La Feria de Sevilla. I, I've, I've went to La Feria de Sevilla very old in my life, when I was like 40, 40 a lot. And you see 90% of the women dress in Sevillanas. So in Spain, we have these two very important dresses, Sevillanas and Meninas. So here, we take a look at um, some of your inspiration from art. Can you talk a little bit more about um, Dali and his influence? Well, my, my father used to be the best collector of contemporary art in the 60s in Spain. So I was grown up going, visiting studios of painters, painting, going to galleries, going to museums. And I was obsessed with art. And I think this obsession with art has changed all my life and has been the conductor of my life. In reality, I love um, Picasso, what I adore Picasso, he's my <laughs> favorite, and, and I love, I like very much Miro and others, but I don't like so much Dali. But once I decide to do an homage to Dali, to, to the surrealism, and I say, I don't, I don't want to be a surrealist, but I am completely surrealist because, <laughs> for example, in Spain, everybody was thinking of me for Alice in Wonderland, no? And I did <laughs> like Alice in Wonderland. But I, once I did a, a um, thing for a theater mm -hmm. of Alice in Wonderland, who still is, who has been 15 years going in the... Oh, still running. Still <laughs> running. And have, I have done three different versions of that. And now I understand that Alice in Wonderland is very, very important for me. No? So in Spain, they used to think in me for two things. One, for children, mm -hmm. because they think children are more, the, the, it's more easy for them to understand my fashion. And another thing that I hate, but they used to think in me, it was in Carnival. <laughs> One, I was in, once I was in Madrid, in the, during the carnivals, mm -hmm. and they make me a member of the jury. <laughs> so I arrived to the, to the jury, and mm -hmm. there was a policeman, and they say, the people who are disguised that way, they say, I am not disguised. <laughs> so, uh, they, but in all the carnivals in Spain, for years and years, always you can see people dressed in Agatha Ruiz de la Prada. Yeah. For years, so, so they, they, the good thing about my fashion is that people have an idea of what Agatha Ruiz de Prada is. If, if you go to a school mm -hmm. and you go to a class of six years old and you say, take a pencil and draw an, a, a, what is Agatha Ruiz de la Prada dress, all of the people will do it without Absolutely. hesitation. And that is, but at the same time, they were afraid of wearing that. So it was, they understand they completely know what it was, mm -hmm. but a lot of people were very much afraid because of that craziness of la movida and everything. This is my piano dress. Yes. I have to give one of my piano dresses to the FIT. <laughs> and this is, uh, I, 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 once I did my first fashion show in, in Paris, which mm -hmm. was other of the best times in my life, I had one dress like that with little, uh, ¿cómo se dicen pajaritos? 
birds, birds mm -hmm. but they were real birds. <laughs> and, and two hours before the show, some of the birds were out of the, the and the, 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 the space was so high, it was impossible. But we, has, well, we had one people in my team whose name was Paco, <laughs> el, the inventor, mm -hmm. and Paco the inventor was ma magic. And he took the birds and put them inside the dress another time. <laughs> so does this one have the real birds or no? No. No. <laughs> so your runways, you've shown internationally in Paris, in New York, in Milan. Uh, but this fashion show especially, you had a special guest visitor. So we'll watch this clip and see who that is. This was the fashion show of Las Meninas. <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen brought us Borat, and now we have Bruno. The has been called everything from vulgar to brilliant. And one thing's for certain, whenever you find Bruno, you'll find trouble as well. Take a look. The Velcro so bad made by Frederick Baum. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll stop. Yeah, we haven't finished the thing. Yeah. Yeah. This is my general manager for one thank you. But <laughs> So what were you thinking? I mean, with well, this plan, I, did you some, know about so, so, two, two or three years, no, four years before that fashion show in Paris, uh -huh. I, all, I had another problem, a similar problem. Oh, yeah? The person was not famous, but he was a horrible man <laughs> with a wedding dress. Uh -huh. And we were, uh, and I have the wedding dress because someone <laughs> my team, the tal so we got the wedding dress. But it was in the middle of a fashion show, a very expensive and very important fashion show for us. And he this, uh, he went he was in the public I think so all was in the video so when that happens I didn't know who, I say lights out so we had like 200 different uh, press people and mm -hmm. photographs there and when the the light were off and everybody was crying ah! <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't know what was happening no and then. The police, the, the Italian police, the Carabinieri, came to my fashion show, mm -hmm. to Borat. Because in my fashion show, there was the president of La Camera de la Moda Italiana. Mm -hmm. And that is? And, uh, the... and he, he's the most important person so in they... fashion, mm -hmm. and he called the police. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, it's El Cavalieri Boselli, Boselli, which is a gentleman. So he called the police and the Carabinieri came to my show and so I was in all the news in the world. So you got great press for it. Yes, at the beginning I was furious and, and so I was in the press and I was less furious every time. <laughs> this is my, my shop in Tribeca. So this, you have opened um, boutiques all over the world, but your boutiques have a very special, it's not like going to the gap. You have a very special kind of design. How do you talk about how you develop um, well, no, the For me, the boutiques are like my sons or daughters. <laughs> they, for example, if I am here in New York from the eight, from at 10 in the morning to the, when I close, I am in the shop. If, if I have something very, very important, not, but normally I spend my day in my shops in my, in Paris, in Milan, here, so it's like, uh, for me, this, when I think in uh, Amancio Ortega of Zara, who has 7,000 shops in the world, I cannot understand, because I have a, a, a for me, a shop is like a, someone of your family. Mm -hmm. I, every day I know how it has gone. I know all about the shop. I, it's a place where I, I remember at the big, my, my beginnings, I love to sell. Sell is a very important thing for me. So I remember my first collection, I used to sell every dress myself. I, I, I even remember the prices uh -huh. and the clients and everything, no? So one, because you, you design something, but when someone buys it, it's like a miracle, no? <laughs> and so for, for the, the shops, for me, are, they are too personal, mm -hmm. I, I think. Um, 
the big companies have a relation who has nothing to do with market relation with the shops. This shop was designed by Karim Rashid, who is also a very good friend of mine. He's also part of a fund, founder of, a fund, of my foundation. And this is, it's in Greenwich Street, Greenwich with Watts in Tribeca. I first had a shop in Soho, mm -hmm. but now I am in Tribeca. I am very happy in Tribeca. So I found it quite surprising when researching that Madrid Fashion Week, the three main sponsors are, of course, Mercedes-Benz, L'Oreal, and then Inditex. So Inditex being the company who owns Zara. And I found that interesting that a fast fashion company actually support uh, the fashion industry. So can you maybe explain the role that they play in Yes, Spain? because Spain, as I told you, has a very historical role in fashion because the Spanish style is a style that everybody recognizes. Mm -hmm. The austerity, the black things. Sp then we had the years of the haute couture mm -hmm. with uh, Cristobal Valenciaga, Perteraz, Miliver Hayek. Then we have the crazy years of La Movida. Mm -hmm. And then we, we had a little bit of complex of, of inferiority. And then <laughs> nobody knows how we became number one in the world, in Spain, with fa uh, fast food, no? So that is a miracle. I thanks God I am a very good friend of, of the owner of Inditex. And I think it's a very good thing that he began some years ago to help us with the catwalk. So how does having this kind of fast fashion giant um, in Madrid, how does that affect, I mean, obviously you're a very successful designer, but other young independent designers coming well, up? Well, not only for Spain, but for the world, mm -hmm. it's impossible to fight against Indit, against Zara, because they have the best, they, they have prices that you, it's impossible for a normal person to arrive there, no? It's mm -hmm. impossible. So I think the, for the last 20, 30 years, the world of fashion has, is becoming crazy because they don't know how to, 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 to fight mm -hmm. against the, the fast fashion. No? And thanks God, was, was Spain is the number one fast fashion country. So you can see... We this is I, another thing that I love to do, but I, now I'm a little bit obsessed. That is why I'm so happy to be here in FIT, mm -hmm. <laughs> is I love to do fashion exhibition. No? So we'll show the picture of the... She, you've done fashion exhibitions all over the world. Yes, this was one in La Triennale de Milan. This was in, in Bordeaux. Bordeaux the, at that moment, that museum used to be the most modern museum in France. Uh, and then you will see another one in France. This is a little, a little, little city called Roubaix, very close to Lille, to Lille. And we were there for three months at the beginning, then two more. And then there was the second largest exhibition in visitors in wow. his history. And the first one was a Picasso exhibition. <laughs> the Spanish <laughs> <taking over. laughs> So how do you find your work? How and and this in year, in six months, I, I am in the month number six. I mm -hmm. have done six different exhibitions wow. in museum, in, in a independent exhibition, because this is part of, or this is mm -hmm. what I call collective ex exhibition. Mm -hmm. You have done all the work, but in my exhibition, I have done most of the work. <laughs> so you so, also um, so, curate so, your exhibitions as well. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> you understand no, our So pain. I have been doing six or so five, mm -hmm. and in this month I'm going to do one in Brazil, which is going to be the sixth, and like ten, like uh, being part of a mm -hmm. of a big exhibition, no, so a collective exhibition. So I, I, uh, it's also part of my obsession with art and with museums. So for me. Because when you see the work of a designer in a museum is when you see if it is if it's good or not. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's something which is very much in the tendency. But you see that some years later and you see that it has... It doesn't hold up. Yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold up. So to, to know the life of a designer, the professional life, the best is to see a retrospective. And of course, we have um, another exhibition of your work in New York. 
And I would like very much to do a retrospective here, but I, I know you don't do retrospective of any key <laughs> person. So uh, I decide uh, I will be waiting some for, for the opportunity of someone as important as the FIT, which is very, very difficult. But at the same time, I am doing little exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And this one is the story of my studio, so my story through the posters. So, it is because graphic design is also a very important part of my studio. So, there is a lot of, of you can see we do posters all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I will I invite all the public to go to my party next week <laughs> and to see the exhibition. So, now so, we're going to take some questions. So, we have some questions here from you guys. Um, one of them is for you. It says, uh, how does Spain influence your work? Well, I think there are big. Um, so I am not a nationalist because I am someone who um, I am very happy here in New York and feel very very happy in Paris. I has I have a book who, who, of the foundation who is, explains my 15 years in Paris. Mm -hmm. I love Paris and Paris fashion. I love Italy. I I like a lot of places. But I think Spain is very important in the influence of, as, it was, uh, as I told you, when I saw Balenciaga there as a French designer, <laughs> I was completely, because... We had a I'm, conversation uh, about it. No, because for me, Spain is, o sea, the influence of Spain are very important. Mm -hmm. So um, the question is, when did you discover that color was your signature? And I also want to add on, what role does color play in your design? You know, the, the father of my grandmother was from Guatemala. Mm. So is, that is the reason, I think, why I am not the typical Spanish designer. Because the typical Spanish designer is very sad. And normally they, they do most of the things in black. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that this, uh, my, my grand grandfather, was very handsome and he was very funny and he was very attractive. <laughs> and I think his blood has influenced me a lot. So when I go to South America, Latin America, I discover that I have a lot of things in common with that place of the world, perhaps mm -hmm. more than that. Than other Spanish people. Yes. And what, uh, what cities do you find most exciting? Well, for, for, there are, for fashion, it's very interesting what you have done. I have exhibited in most of the capitals you have shown. Yes, exactly. Even I have in Nigeria Fashion Week. <laughs> because all, all, there is a new phenomenon about, about, with, with that of the fashion capitals. is that a long time ago, there was only Paris. Mm -hmm. Then there was Paris, and then in the 70s, Milan. Then a little bit of London, but never, mm -hmm. and then New York. And but now everybody want to be a fashion capital. So <laughs> yes. even for example, I have been in in Mexico, mm -hmm. and in Mexico City they used to have four different fashion weeks. So you never knew mm -hmm. what was the one was the Mercedes Fashion Week, the other was the Fashion Week Fashion Week, the other was Fashion, <laughs> no sé qué week. <laughs> so the, uh, and only in Mexico I have been. Because I think I am one of the designers in the world who have gone more to fashion weeks. That's yeah. another part of my last, this last 10 years or 12 years. And I, I have done fashion shows in, in all of these fashion weeks in, in Mexico, but also in Monterrey, in Guadalajara, Puebla, a lot of fashion weeks. in Cancun, <laughs> in... Um, well, no, perhaps in, in 15 different cities. In, wow. in the last one was in, in Tulum. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful, <laughs> Tulum, pero maravillosa. <laughs> and um, so everybody wants to have his fashion week, no? Mm -hmm. And even in Nigeria, mm -hmm. even in, in Gambia. Last mm -hmm. year I was in Gambia, I didn't know. And I have done lots of fashion shows in all the the east of Europe, because the ex-communist countries 
who have suffered a lot from these gray years, mm -hmm. 40, 50 years of only gray, they want fashion, they, they, they are so happy with fashion that the, the place where you go and they smile and they are so, they pay more attention is in the East, in the ex-communist countries. Mm. And there are plenty of fashion shows there in Montenegro, in Albania, in, in everywhere, in Uzbekistan, in <laughs> Georgia, everywhere. <laughs> And we didn't include some of those cities in our exhibition, but definitely places of interest, Eastern Europe, fashion, and um, fashion designers really gaining momentum. Yes, because everybody dreams to become a fashion city. Before it was only Paris, and Paris. The other day I was in, in the inauguration of the uh, museum in Paris, Museo Galera, mm -hmm. and it was the mayor who is from Spain, the mayor of Paris, who was in, and she say she was going to give 70 million euros to that museum. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because she wants Paris to be without any doubt the capital in the world of fashion. So they give all the money to the museums and imagine 70 million the euros. No? They're holding on. <laughs> so I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, so we had one um, for Liz and I, and you guys wanted to know uh, what inspired us to do the exhibition. So with it, um, Liz and I started looking and we realized that if you go into the exhibition, you'll see that um, there's hundreds of fashion weeks around the world. And we started to consider, well, that must mean that there's hundreds of fashion industries. And for a lot of the different capitals, we're very familiar with fashion weeks in Paris, in New York, in London, in Milan. But we're really curious about, well, what about all these other fashion cities? They have to have some significance if they're making a draw and if they're being represented in the press. So we started looking into these and we realize there's a lot and a lot of significant interesting fashion and really recreating and rebranding some of these cities. And just to add um, a little bit, globalization is kind of the wave of the future. It's not something that's going to slow down and fashion is just an, another industry that's kind of going along with that. So even though Paris is holding on um, with everything they have to um, their reputation as a fashion city and still extremely important, there's still a lot of talent, a lot of um, industries growing all over the world and they're producing unique, interesting fashion. So we really wanted to explore that. So we'll see in the next few years if it's just going to be the four, the big four, or if there's going to be now a fifth fashion capital joining. So if you'll join me in thanking Agatha for coming. <laughs>